Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepare Mind 101 and it is week nine. Man, where's the time gone? In the summer of Jessica. What? Anyway, so this week we're not gonna go beat it up or anything like that. We're gonna do something a little bit more practical because there is so many people that have gone out and purchased it because I keep getting tagged on Facebook and stuff like that. I figured we would do a video today about how I maintain my Jessica X. How do I do the sharpening? How do I do the after use care before I put it back up on the rack, getting it ready for the next time? But before we do that, we need to talk about the week eight winner, which is this guy or girl. I don't know. I haven't picked it yet. <laughs> so congratulations. Uh, be sure to send me an email. Chris at Prepare Mind. God dang it. I did it again. Where is that coming from? I'm going to have to just get that email address. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm retarded. PreparedMind101 at gmail.com. I don't get it. Let's talk about sharpening. This is one of those subjects where people get all bent out of shape. Everybody's got their way to do it, and guess what? Their way is the right way. And that's true. Whatever works for you. But since this is my knife, people always ask me how I do it. I am a big, huge proponent of WorkSharp uh, tools. No, they don't sponsor me anything like that. I've been using them since the first one came out. So I'm going to show you how I use mine. Now granted, when we're talking about my preferred method of sharpening, I like the WorkSharp Ken Onion Edition with the blade grinder attachment. That's the pricier option. I understand that. So I will give you an alternative. But I look at it this way, once you start getting a good amount of knives, or once you start picking up more knives that cost more money, you should put, you should put away money, I mean, stop buying knives one time and put that money toward some good sharpening gear. Because with what I have, I can touch up, I can repair, I can fix just about any edge, no problem whatsoever in the minimal amount of time. Yeah, you can go old timer and you can sit there and do all this stuff. I don't have that kind of time. I don't, just do not have it. I don't have the patience for it either, but I've gotten really, really good at abrasive belt sharpening. And that's how knife makers sharpen their knives before they put it in the box and send them out to you. So if it's good enough for the people that make the knives, it's good enough for me. I don't get into all this, you know, S hit the fan. What if we have an EMP and we don't have electricity? What are you gonna do then? Well, yeah, there are other ways to field sharpen knives. I've got ceramic rods. I've got work sharp field sharpeners. I've got Smith's freaking diamond sharpeners. I've got field strops. I've got all of it. But when I put stuff away, when I bring the edge back to perfection before I store it, I use work sharp stuff. So, and if you want to know how much they are, like Amazon, stuff like that, they are in the sharpening section at preparemy101.com. But the original work sharp, that's the alternative. The original work sharp will work good also. And the price on those have come way down. I mean, I've seen those for like 59 bucks and that's a steal. There's no reason not to get it. You'll hear people say, oh, you'll blunt the tip and this, that, and the other thing. The work sharp's not blunting the tip, you're blunting the tip. They're, like any tool, you gotta learn how to use it. So I always recommend people, if they start using work sharp or any kind of abrasive belt sharpening system, practice first. Practice on some old, you know, $9 Moras or some of your old folders and things like that and get, get the hang of it first. Now with the Ken Onion, with the blade grinder attachment, uh, you're going horizontal instead of vertically. And I find it is just a lot harder to do any kind of stuff like blunting the tip. Once you get used to the Ken Onion with the blade grinder, you're not gonna wanna use anything else. You just won't. I mean, when, Will, when Will's wife screwed up his ax by using it to demolish cabinets and banging it into screws, I mean, it's like a, 
$175 Granfors Brux axe. He brought it over to me. It looked like a Spyderco serrated axe. I was able to fix that axe and make it razor sharp in under five minutes using the original work sharp, not even the, the fancy one. So let's take the camera inside down to my sharpening table in the basement and I'll walk you through the steps of what I do after I bring this home after a weekend of use. Okay, so I'm down in the unfinished portion of my basement. This is where my sharpening table is and I'm gonna walk you through how I generally touch up my Jessica X after I use it for a weekend or whatnot. It's never actually dull. I mean, it holds an edge great, but I'm just, you know, ADD when it comes to my knife edges. I always clean everything up as soon as I get done using it. So you never really need to, unless you really like bang it up somehow, you never really need to go with like the heavy belts. I usually start with the second heaviest and I'll just walk you through the process. Uh, it's really quick, really efficient. Okay, so for the Ken Onion work sharp with the blade grinder attachment, I'm going to use the X65 blade grinder belts. And I this has an this is where your angle is set. So I generally I have found with Jessica X, I like to use a 20 degree angle. That's what I sharpen it at seems to give you the best results. Just set it right there, make sure it's flat. It's not taking off a lot of material, but it will raise a very small burr, which you'll see as you're taking it across. And we're just going to drop down to the next one, which is the the uh, U or the X22 belt. On this particular knife, you really don't need to go to the lower belt, uh, unless that is your only uh, machine that you have, in which case I would also take it down to the, which one is this, the X4 belt. But what I do, this is the next machine that I actually use, and this is just a Harbor Freight 1x30. So, Pete Kohler actually taught me this. What you want to do, instead of having it sitting up like this, like it comes, this will lay on its back. And that's going to make it a lot easier for you to strop with. And you want to strop right here where there's no backing. So it's going to give you just the slightest bit of a convex polished edge. So let's run it through here. And these things only cost, you know, 30 ish dollars, and then you get a go online and find a Surge's Sharp leather strop belt for a 1x30. So, first, we're going to put some compound on it. I like to use RW Wilson Green Compound. <laughs>
not pushing down hard, just, just enough to make the belt bend a little bit. All you want is a light pressure. And I generally just use, make sure I get any uh, residual compound off of here. pretty much it. That is all that I'm going to ever do after using this thing in the field. And it is going to be razor screaming sharp and I have not removed a lot of material. Hardly any at all. And that's one of the things I love about this 1070 is just so easy to sharpen. But the easiest way is going to be with these tools. Can you do it other ways? Sure. But this way, I mean, with these two tools right here, you can get just about any freaking knife, any grind, screaming sharp, no problem whatsoever. Okay, let me show you one other reason why I really like the Kenna Onion Blade Grinder. Touching up or creating 90 degree spines for bushcraft use. Now, Jessica X will strike a ferro rod, but you kind of got to hold it up this way in order to get that. I wanted to be able to strike it the normal way, like most people do, like with an LT right. So, all I did was I created one little spot with a sharp 90 degree spine. And you could do the whole thing if you wanted to, but I'd rather just keep uh, most of that coating there. So now I can do it either way. Now let me show you how I did it. This little shelf right here gives you access to a 90 degree angle. You got a brace behind it. And that is how I, I mean, I've taken moras that don't come with 90 degree edges and put them on there in like no time flat. So let's do this real quick, just by way of an example. That's really all it takes. Just put an insane 90 degree spine for a ferro striking or whatever on there. Just makes it a little bit easier. But you can do that with just about any knife as long as the spine is hard enough. I've had problems doing it with like Topps knives because generally their spines are softer and their edges are harder. But most knives, uh, no problem whatsoever uh, putting a, a 90 degree spine on it or touching one up. And if, if it's already got one like an LT right, you don't have to use like the heaviest grit. You can use one of the lowest, lower ones. You know, one or two passes, boom, it's back to screaming sharp again. And the last thing I generally do with this one before I put it away is I take some of this uh, WD-40 uh, specialist silicone. I just soak the blade. Hang it up, let it drip and dry. And that will leave just the slightest coating of silicone on the blade. It's just going to help uh, prevent rust and things like that. Wipes off easy. I really like this stuff. So I use a couple different things for rust prevention, uh, 5W30 and this stuff are the two things that I 
probably used the most. I mean, I don't worry about the food safe stuff. I keep a, I keep separate knives specifically for processing food. It's just the way that I do it. But hey, whatever it is that you like to do, I mean, overall, it's what works for you. So that's how I do my sharpening stuff. Now let's talk about the week nine Jeskax giveaway, which I have right here. So go ahead and sign it. Mark it for week nine. There it is. You know the routine. All you gotta do is drop a comment in the video in the comment section below. And a week from today, I will use the YouTube random comment picker and select somebody. Doesn't matter where in the world you're at, uh, every, everybody gets a fair shot at it. So good luck to you. Okay, so that's it for week nine. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Check out preparedmind101.com. That's my Amazon store that helps support the channel, keeps me doing what I'm doing, and makes it so I can keep doing all these great giveaways and things like that. Other than that, all the important links that you need to know are in the description box below, and they're in the description box of every video. All right, thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video here soon, so see you then.